Hey, y'all. Rob the American here, and welcome to chapter... Oh, wait a second, y'all. Uh, you know, we've been counting up since I started, and once I got up to like 12 or 13, I started to lose count. Y'all know how I am with numbers and temperature and all that kind of stuff. So from now on, it's going to be uh, welcome to Tales of Manchester and Watches with Rob the American. And today, we're going to one of the most important culturally and historical buildings in Manchester. And I think it represents Britain very well because it's a two for one. It's a library and also a pub in the same building. If that's not quintessential England, I don't know what is. And on my wrist today is going to be this. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to strap this on and I hope you all will join me. Come on. All right, y'all, we are on our way to our destination. We are, I am in St. Peter's Square right now. Uh, it's milder today. Alexa told me it was going to be 51 degrees today uh, Fahrenheit. No, I hate when she ends on odd numbers because that confuses me when I try and do the math. So 51 degrees Fahrenheit, divide by two. Oh, no, wait a minute. Subtract 30 and divide by two, uh, 51, 30. That's uh, 21 divided by 2, uh, 11, 2 times 11, 22, no, something like that. Anyway, uh, we're making our way up Mosley Street. Check out this building in front of us. Look at that. That's awesome. This is the Manchester Art Gallery. That's a beautiful building. And there's an extension behind it that's super cool too. All right, let's keep going. We are about two blocks away. You're hearing the trams in the background. Mosley Street is a busy tram street. The tram system in Manchester is actually very good, especially for someone like me who lives in the city center and doesn't have a British driver's license. I use them all the time and they're usually pretty reliable. We're about one block from our destination and I'm super excited, y'all. All right, we're almost there. All right, y'all, it's coming up on our right. You can see those big columns. That's where we're going today. And this is the Portico Library. This was opened way back in 1806. Example of Greek Revival architecture. Wow, look at that, y'all. As I said in my introduction, it's, it's a two for one. Now, it is the Portico Library building, but downstairs is the Bank Pub, and upstairs is still the library. All right, y'all, Let's. our first stop is going to be the Portico Library. Let's have a wander on in. All right, y'all, we are walking into the Portico Library. Check this out. Be ready to get your socks blown off. God, look at this, y'all. Wow. First thing you got to look up when you come in. Look, look at that. That's insane. Oh my gosh. Look at this, y'all. Wow. This building is sick. Look at this. Wow. Oh, wow. So the Portico Library is one of Manchester's longest running institutions. It's a subscription library and newsroom whose historic collection of over 25,000 books and archives spans over 450 years with an emphasis in Victorian and Georgian literature. It was established by 400 founding subscribers. Now the library's first secretary was Peter Mark Roger. Now that main name initially might not mean anything to you, but when you put the name Roger with the word thesaurus, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Little did I know that when I was a kid in English class decades and decades and decades and decades ago, that I would be standing in the building where Roger's thesaurus was written. That's awesome. Look at that clock on the, on the wall. That's awesome. And then opposite that, check this out, y'all. 
a contraption, <laughs> I should know the name of it, but I'm not sure what it's called, that gives you the wind direction. How cool is that? Wow. And then we've got different categories of books. So we've got biography, voyages and travels, and check this out, y'all. This really, I thought this was uh, really crazy. Polite literature. So I guess I had a question is, is I wonder where they keep their impolite literature. No, so this, I had to look this up. And the polite literature was just really a term from the Enlightenment period, basically during the 1700s, that a person could read for pleasure instead of only for duty or obligation. Wow. This place is sick. Gosh, look at that. Now again, this place is open to the public. They serve lunch during the week. Anyone can come in. Everyone is welcome. You're welcome to browse the books, but you have to be a subscriber to actually um, view the books. All right, y'all check this out. All you Charlotte Bronte fans. I've got a first edition of her novel, Shirley. Now it's in pieces and under glass, glass case because of its precarious condition. But that, how cool is that? And since we are in a library, why don't we grab a book and have a seat in this cozy chair? All right, y'all, as expected, we are spoiled for choice here. I think I'll pick something that really represents um, the theme of this library. Let's see what we can find. Now, you may not be a, a poem kind of guy, but I found the works of Percy Bysshe Shelley. And if you are a Breaking Bad guy, you should know this poem. Ozymandias. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal these words appear, My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty in despair. Nothing besides remain round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. Y'all, I'm sitting in front of the building, and after reading that poem, it got me thinking about the nature of power and how legacies are really destined to fade into oblivion. You know, the men that built this building are long gone, and yet the building still stands. And after we're long gone, uh, hopefully the building will still be standing for future generations. And I think it's, it's invaluable to, to appreciate what came before us and not always be so critical. And remember that um, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants thinking we can fly. <laughs> on that uh, somber note, why don't we head on into the pub? <laughs> all right, check out those huge columns. Wow. All right, let's do this. All right, y'all, we are walking in to the bank. Check this out. Oh my God, look at this. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Look at these cool chandeliers and columns all throughout. That's insane, y'all. All right, so we know the history of this. In the 1920s, they separated the upstairs and the downstairs, and the library, Portico Library, was just upstairs, which we've already seen. This became the Bank of Athens, and then eventually became Lloyd's Bank. And in 1985, this became the pub, the bank pub, what you see today. Look at that floor. Oh, that's awesome. And this bar. Wow. Oh, my God, look at this. This is so cool. And you'd think this was really a fancy, posh pub, 
but it's really just a neighborhood, a neighborhood pub. A lot of locals hang out here. Uh, a lot of folks come in after work. Look at all these pictures. Wow, look at that. Oh, here's a painting of the original Portico Library. Check that out, y'all. Wow, that's insane. This place, oh, look, there we are. <laughs> this place is sick. Wow. Oh, this is so cool. Why don't we get something to drink and have a seat? All right, y'all, we've had a seat. We've gotten something to drink and have a look at this. Wow. So this is the Rondé Must de Cartier. <laughs> and I think that's just fancy French talk, meaning that it's a round watch. But look at this. It's got a vintage style, very elegant with those Roman numerals. I mean, that is class. Now, I have been told that young folks today don't know how to tell the time on a regular clock because they're so used to their phones. And the fact that it's got Roman numerals makes it a double whammy. Maybe some of y'all can, in the comments, can tell me if that's true or not. But look at this. Now, some of my pals give me a hard time because they see this and go, hey Rob, what time is the opera tonight? <laughs> and if y'all knew me, you'd know there was no opera in my past, present, or future. But there is this amazing watch. This is awesome. Why don't we have a closer look? Oh yeah. It's a 36 millimeter stainless steel case with a quartz movement, meaning you never have to wind it, a synthetic blue sapphire crown, and a sandblasted silvery white dial with blue steel sword shaped hands. The thickness is under eight millimeter so it wears very well. And if you look at the seven, now I don't know if I can get close enough, the V in seven spells out the word Cartier. This is a Cartier signature, and it tells you that the watch is authentic and not a fake. Why don't we uh, put it on the wrist? In spite of the fact this watch is only 36 millimeters, it fits my six and a half inch wrist perfectly. It's classy, elegant, timeless. This watch can go anywhere, dressed up or dressed down. It's stunning. And if you flip it around, you've got the signature Cartier buckle. This is pure class. All right, y'all, that's it for me today. I've got an upstairs and a downstairs, thank you. The downstairs to Dominic and the good folks at the Bank Pub for giving us permission to come in here and film here today. And the upstairs, thank you to all the fine folks at the Portico Library who gave me permission to roam around and get into some mischief and share with me some interesting Manchester history. So if you find yourself in Manchester as a tourist or you live here, come on up Mosley Street and check it out. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And be sure and leave a comment down below. But as usual, be merciful. I'm one small guy. And I hope you'll join me next time for another amazing Manchester building and another super awesome watch. All right, y'all. Be well.